Okay, so a couple questions I wanted to go over, man. Uh, uh, meeting you and Jovan has been a huge blessing for us, man. Um, it's like um, I'm always rooting for folks who get out of the joint and are trying to make an impact. You know what I mean? Whether it's something small or, or, or something on the internet, I'm always like, I, but what I always see is like, uh, it always turns out to be a popularity rather than the cause. You know, it's like, it's a lot of times it's about them rather than what, they're, what they said they're trying to do mm -hmm. and then ends up all about them. Like, for me, I try to, I try to help folks, man, that, uh, that are really trying to get things done. So, uh, it's been a blessing, man, uh, being a local guy that you are here in Arizona. I remember the, um, the first time that what, what really, uh, got my attention listening to the Chronicles channel, uh, was, uh, the story with, um, Robert Martinez, you know, uh, Sapo. And, uh, I remember I went on your channel and I was so excited, man, you know, cause I'm like, oh, wow, man, you gonna let me come on your channel and no one ever lets me go on their channel. <laughs> Now, this guy's special, right? But anyway, but I have felt like everything you talked about on your channel, I felt like we were, um, somehow we're in the same dirt road. We drove down the same streets, man, growing up. You know, I'm just a little bit older than you. But uh, but I remember that uh, that, uh, that story I told about Chapo, you know, uh, not Chapo, but uh, from, from Sapo. Uh, and, uh, and you're like, hey, man, he comes on the channel. Uh, I'm like, okay, that's kind of odd. Because uh, I didn't know that you had him on your channel maybe like earlier in the year or whatever. So I, so for me, I was like, wow, that's cool. So that gets me to confirm my story. Like, like I'm not lying. Like, that's, it's important to have people validate what you're saying, right? <laughs> so, 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 having, uh, so having him validate my story made me feel really good. And I feel like God set this up for me to meet Jovan and... She came to church, man, all dressed up as a bunny. And that was like, man. And then I got crap for that because I'm a, like, I'm a, like, uh, like, what do you have bunnies going to church, bro? That's like a pagan religion and I don't want nothing to do with it. And I was like, bye. Because that's the type of stuff religious people do. And that's why I befriend you, man. Because I'm not trying to be religious. I'm not trying to be a Pharisee. I'm not trying to be like if I like if I have clean hands or something like like if my life is perfect. It's not, but that it's just that we have a different outlook on uh, spiritual things, uh, our souls. But that doesn't mean that. Look at man. God told me to love my neighbor, bro. It didn't say to love the neighbor that believes what I believe. So, what the heck do you do when you love people? You accept them as they are. You don't, sorry, I'm preaching. You don't throw in standards, man. Anyway, so all that said, that's how I, I got turned on to your channel. And I feel so privileged, man, that you came to visit the church. You're in the neighborhood because I saw you cruising Arrowhead and stuff. Let's go to in out Burger. <laughs> I'm like, man, there's no peach fish and chips in Arrowhead, man. So how am I going to get them over here? I don't know. We're stuck. No, but uh, I just want to thank you, bro, for hanging out with us, man. You, um, you've been uh, the best, uh, uh, the, the 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 best internet friend that I've had, you know, other than uh, Cholo Trucker. Shout out. <laughs> and uh, but I think that. Uh, Jovan has really uh, invested time into our family, uh, energy. Uh, you know, she's got some connections with music and uh, been able to bless our ministry, man. It's like, like, Jovan, you know, you've uh, you believed in us, man. You're a big reason why, you know, I'm able to talk to your husband, which, by the way, congratulations on the bling bling. Okay. That thing, you know what? I was going to get, like, a light out here. All we need to do is put that thing up in the air at an angle. It's like a strobe light. <laughs> Wow, how much you pay for that? Can I say, can we talk about how much you paid for that? Is it on a, is it on a payment plan? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay with that. Because you keep on, you know, just stop doing this because I keep on having to do that, man. That thing is beautiful. I remember uh, I got Michelle her ring and I was so insecure about it. We were at the Greyhound station and I got insecure about it. I was supposed to give it to her in Iowa, but I was like, man, I don't know if she's going to like it. So I'm like, hey, do you want this? 
And she like, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I never have gotten gay before. I don't know. I, do I want this or not? You know? And she's like, look at that. And man, she was like in tears and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, at the Greyhound station, right? It's all gangster. Anyway, and then uh, she told her sister how I gave it to her. Like, oh, uh, uh. He, <laughs> so she made me a poster again. This time I went all out. <laughs> had a video camera. I got it on video. Made a DVD. I had like some dot, some some uh, DJ, the piano player, call us down from the top floor. It was at that pizza place, that Mesa, the oh, organ the stop, place. where they played the giant organ in the restaurant. It's supposed to be the biggest organ in the world. Oh. Anyway, he's like, oh, can someone, uh, Michelle, can you please come down here? Apparently we have an announcement. Like the whole, the whole restaurant, huge. Everyone was just quiet and everyone was just looking at it. So I went all out and I did it again. But yeah, man, you, you got to do it right. I couldn't do all that. I know, bro. I mean, I think she's like, whatever, man. I just got the ring. It's all good. But <laughs> ah, some people, you know, some people just aren't forgiving, you know. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is this, man. I want to know why I got you here. Something I ask people that I uh, that, that, that come on the channel and that have been doing some tiempo, been doing some time. I had a friend named uh, 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 Chris McCrimmon who did 20 some odd years on death row. And he's been out. For a minute and I asked him this on the question I want to ask you the same question uh, you said earlier you answered it earlier but I want to ask you a uh, person does an amount of, uh, a certain amount of time in the joint what does it take to stay out of the joint like what drastic things that you do to make sure that you're not going to put yourself in a scenario where you're ever going to go back because the statistics say about 80% of 80% or whatever I don't know how old the statistics but like 75 80% of us end up back in the joint which is crazy because I'm like I ain't ever going back there but I, there was a couple times like there was this um yeah there was a couple <laughs> like I said <laughs> well, one, I, no, I, no, but anyway, there was a couple times where I felt like dang that was a close one I could have got myself caught up in that stuff you know or I'm hanging out with someone like oh dang I didn't know they had like a bag on them or whatever you know but uh, uh, uh but but so but what do you think about like someone just getting out because we're trying to avoid going in, but there is element of staying out. I mean, that's another uh, other side of the coin. Yeah. What do you think help you succeed? And like I said, we don't even, um, I haven't even introduced really who you were, Cricket, uh, but I don't think that's as important as it is as, uh, as staying out and, and being an influence out here. So, yeah, that's the question. So I think that, <clears throat> I think it's just a matter of, of wanting it. Uh, a lot, I think the recidivism uh, rate that you're talking about with the 80% is because most people get out and go back to their neighborhoods, hang out with the same people they hung out with before, um, you know, all those things, which I've done numerous times in the past, and, and it led me right back to the joint every time. Um, this time getting out, obviously, I had made up my mind that I was through with it, and uh, it, that, that was just it. You know, I decided I'm done, and, and I was done. Um, I didn't call any old friends. I didn't, you know, I mean, it helped that most of them wanted to kill me. But um, <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> I could have very easily, you know, I moved to a different state. I could have very easily got right back into the game, messing with people that didn't know who I was and, and, and who I had been in my past. But I decided not to. I just decided that that wasn't the life for me. I, you know, I gave the system uh, over 20 years of my life you know, in total. And, and I, I just wasn't ready to give it anymore. I, I thought, you know, it was time to grow up pretty much. Um, and I had made that decision while I was in, obviously. I knew that when I got out, I was just going to do whatever it took to stay out. And But I think the main thing is not going back to your old friends. Mm -hmm. uh, what I, one of the things that I remember the most about prison is how everybody realizes that their homeboys ain't their homeboys because they forget, they stop getting the letters, they stop getting... You know, they don't get yeah. any money. They all, everybody yeah. talks about it, how I none of my homeboys were ever there for me. But for some reason, when they get out, they forgive all that and go right back into hanging out with the same homeboys and doing the same bullshit and taking the same risks again and end up back in the joint again. And I think you just got to learn from those. You know, we've I learned from the past mistakes. I can, you know, I did that. You know, I, I, I violated and went back to prison, I believe, three times in total. Um... And so, you know, I think the first time I was out four months, the second time I was out um, 13 days, 11 days. Um, and wow. I, and, and uh, something, I was out another time too, I think. But um, 
you know, it was always, it was never, I never had the intention to stay out. You always say, I'm not going to get caught. I'm going to stay out. I'm going to, yeah. but you know, with your actions, you show different. And, and I just continued with my bullshit. I did it. And, and, but once I realized I was done, it was just a matter of staying away from the type of people that are still with that. Mm-hmm. And then just being whoever you want to be from then on, you know, it's hard. You know, people say it's difficult to get jobs and all that as mm-hmm. a felon. I mean, I have murder in my jacket. I have armed robbery in my jacket. It wasn't that hard to get a, a job. I got a job and I showed them that I was willing to work. Yes, there's, you know, like I told you earlier, there, there are companies that have policies and they're not going to hire a felon no matter what. Mm-hmm. Don't go to state. Me. Yeah, just stay away from it. I mean, there are others that will allow you to prove yourself. And that's the bottom line. You just have to prove yourself. And I guess you just can't be too good to prove yourself. You have to prove yourself. You've shown that you're a piece of shit. Now it's time to show that you're not. And once you do that, I think they'll give you the chances that you need. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've been out seven years now. Me and my girl bought a house. Um, I got a job that paid a salary, like a normal job. Um, obviously, nobody at my work or anybody, you know, nobody knows anything about my past except for probably HR, you know, from the beginning. But the normal day-to-day people would never believe that I did any time. Even the people that asked me, hey, these tattoos, you know, and I'd be like, oh yeah, I had friends that had did time and when they got out, they tattooed on me, but no, I've never done time. I was up in the juvenile hall and that's it. And so no one knows my past. No one knows, you know, the people that my day-to-day normal people have no idea of who I was, what I've done. Everybody thinks I've been out here all my life and it just is what it is, you know? And, uh, that's crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's just better that way, I, you know, better than to answer all the questions and you know and i and i don't think it would make a difference i just think it would bring curiosity that I'm, i don't want to talk about mm-hmm. you know there's not normal people don't understand that lifestyle and i've done things that normal people would see as mm-hmm. almost unforgivable uh uh-huh. and so i think that it's best just to avoid it all that makes sense man um no bro um so look at you've been out for seven years um and Tell me about those first two or three years, because those are the ones that seem to be the big, the, the the bumpiest ones. Like you're trying to transition back into society, you know. What I mean, like like right now it's good, yeah. but but those first and you said that it wasn't that difficult if you have a hard work, have a good work ethic, you show up on time, you bust it out, you don't cause any problems, you know, and you're just doing what the boss tells you to do, and you prove that you can do it, then things go smooth, and and and, and but you but you're limited to those agencies that will hire you. Um, for me, everything I want to do was community service type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you talked about trying to get into the juvenile system to help out youth like yourself and like myself before they hit the pin. So it has affected. Well, they denied me from that, of course. Uh, and I knew it was going to happen. Once I filled out the application, um, I was optimistic because of the individual that had brought it to me. I thought that they would be able to pull the strings to get me there. But I think that's the mentality that we all have. We think that people can just pull strings for shit like that. And, and there's some situations where you just can't. I mean, you have to just prove yourself. Mm-hmm. And the paperwork that they see on me, you know, my, you know, the, the application I filled out proves that I'm a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't know me and that's all you read, then that's who I am. Um, it's going to take time to, to, to get, to earn the credibility, to show some history, to prove that they should allow me to do that. And I'm okay with that. I didn't take it personal. I'm not, it didn't, and I didn't take it as like, you know, fuck it, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Um, I pretty much knew it was, once I filled out that application, I knew what it was. You know what I mean? The questions I had to answer, there's no, I wouldn't let me in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. You know, they don't know who I am, and that's why I'm trying to now build that credibility. And it's going to take time. But I had to first get my house in order. You know what I'm saying? So I had to make sure that me, my girl, my son, all of us were good. Um, and I don't, you know, some people may look at it as, you know, selfish or whatever, but I had to make sure that I, we, I could stand on my own two feet before I start speaking to kids about what they need to do with their life. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's what I did. I went to school at first. I was working. My girl was working. Um, I think the first couple of years, it was tough, I guess. Um, 
more than more so that because I made it tough, I think I when I first got out to join, I told I told you God I was drinking a lot. Um I just thought that that's what I was supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew it was legal, I didn't want to fuck with drugs. You know, so I drank. That's me. Um once it started affecting me and my girl in some way, I let it go. I stopped. I haven't drank. I you know, I mean I don't not drink. I just don't drink. You know what I'm saying? Like um, if it was New Year's right now, I'd take some shots and we'd get buzzed and we'd move on. Um, but I wouldn't drink tomorrow. Then, you know what I mean? So it's it's just, I just stopped doing it the way I was because it was affecting what we had got going yeah. on. Yeah. And um, and those are just the decisions, you, those are the choices you have to make in your life as you're moving forward. If things are affecting you in an adverse way, get rid of it. And mm -hmm. it's kind of what I did. Um, I had my son when I got out, he was turning 13. I had never been out on the streets with him. Ever. I got locked up. His mom was pregnant. I found out she was pregnant while I was in there. So this is my first chance to be a dad to my boy. And uh, so that's, you know, I wanted, that's where I wanted to succeed more than anything. And I wanted to show him too that your dad isn't the piece of shit that everybody's, I'm sure, told him throughout his life, right? You know, he's a kid with a dad in prison. The expectations of him is that probably he'll end up the same as his piece of shit father. And, uh, and so I wanted to make sure that, first of all, he saw that I wasn't that piece of shit, that I was, but that, you know, I decided to be a different person, um, if not for him, but because of him, you know, um, and, and, and then that was it. We just decided to be just normal people. You know, we bought a chante, um, uh, we, we got a car. I mean, you just did, we did everything that normal people do and, you know, that's it. And. Once I thought I was stable enough, then we started doing the YouTube thing. And, and, and at first, it wasn't supposed to be, you know, the story of me. You know what I mean? Uh, we had another channel. Most people know we had Perplex. We, mm -hmm. we were doing videos. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, getting past all the bullshit. At the end of the day, you know, I wanted to try something different. I started another, you know, we, we started multiple channels. We have multiple channels. I, I wanted to try something that was that my way. And so I did Chronicles. I started it from scratch. And, and that's what I've been doing ever since. And, and and I don't, you know, I don't do video. I don't, you know, I just sit there and talk. I bullshit. Yeah, you mostly. do. <laughs> and, you know, it, it is what it is. There's, um, uh, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've grown to like you guys, but uh, your um, your following, your the, the people, your community, they seem to be um, such a big heart of a channel. Like I don't know how you go from this, you know, ex con killer to having such a a kind, generous group of people who are trying to. Uh, I guess try to influence their worlds through you and through and through their uh, opportunities. And it's like people are excited to go on the channel and talk and uh, be a community, man. So it's like I think that Chronicles is needed. And here's the thing I've noticed too, bro. You got you got a bunch of people. You got a bunch of Bible, Jesus loving people, man, supporting you. It's well, like I think the I think the ish. I, I, I think here here's the problem. Not the problem. The deal is. I think it's just like-minded individuals. Try to be good. They've been through the same thing I've been through, and they would like to do good in life too. And so we're there to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? We're not there to. We're not sitting here bragging about what we've done. We don't war story it up, and you know, I mean, it, like I, you know, it just we're just there to now let's see what we can bounce off each other and figure out what we can do about getting these youngsters not to take the same path. It's a it's 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 a difficult question. I mean, people have been trying to do that for many, many years, and I don't think I have all the answers. Um, but I like to make a dent if I can, and that's what I'm trying to do. And all those people that are coming in and watch us and, and on the day-to-day -day and, and, and take part in the lives and take part in the fundraising when we do the stuff for the community, I think they just want to do the same thing. You know what I mean? And we don't have all the answers, but... If we can do a little bit, then fuck it. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know. And so that's kind of, I think, where where it's at. And yeah, I mean, as far as the religious aspect of it, I mean, I've always listen. I, I'm not a believer. I'm not a religious dude. But I see the good in it. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I, I can be logical and know that if you follow the teachings of this book, more than likely you're going to be a good person. You know what I mean? Whether you believe the ghost stories behind it or not has no bearing on the fact that most people, if they follow it without the hypocrisy, would be good people. So I don't, I don't mind people coming in and talking about it. I'm not going to debate it because I have my, my, my feelings on it, my beliefs on it, and you have yours. But I definitely agree with the teachings. I mean, but, you know, where they came from has no bearing to me. It's just a matter of thou shalt not kill. Cool. That sounds good to me. And if it sounds good to you, then we're good. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's all it is. And, and so I won't, I'll never down nobody for their religious beliefs. I just don't want to also in return be down for mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's it. I mean, I'm not disrespectful to anybody, whether whatever religion, Muslim, Christian, Scientology, whatever the hell you believe, it, it's all good. You know what I mean? I don't see any bad in any of it. I don't want to force anybody to believe what I believe for any reason. It doesn't matter. I mean, if we're all on the right path, then if I'm going to hell because I don't believe you, then who gives, what do you give a damn? Let me go. You know what I mean? You go have fun wherever you think you're going, and we're, we're all good. But while we're here, let's get together and do yeah. something good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I 100% agree, man. I think Gandhi kind of had a similar experience. Like, uh, I think the quote was, you know, if it wasn't for Christians, you know, I'd probably follow the Bible. <laughs> Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it's unfortunate, man. I have been, uh, I, I, I became a Christian in, Kai, uh, uh, in uh, state prison most of the time in Kaibab and Winslow. 26 years, 27 years ago now. Man, I'm getting old. 27 years ago, and so... So for me, I had to like, just, just like you were willing to lay your life down for your cause and you're in there, I had, to lay, I had to be willing to lay down my life. Like, and so that's for me. For me, that's the impact it made on me. Uh, but I do have a bitterness towards, like you have a bitterness towards your organization. You kind of expose them, like, you know, what they, what they, what the, you know, what, they're, uh, what you say they're really about. And, and for me, I'm kind of like that with my Christian brethren. I'm not trying to crap on their offering to God. But I've seen a lot of the religion and hypocrisy in religious realms. So I, so that's why I'm okay with, um, you know, people who talk smack about Jesus followers. Like, hey, I have the same problem. You know, I, I love Jesus. But yeah, these guys are, we can all be hypocritical a lot of times. But these guys are hurt me too, man. And I'm over here supposed to be on the same team. So there is some little, there's a little bit that I can relate about being down for something and seeing your same people. Uh, stab you in the back, or or, or 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 not be what you thought they're about, kind of deceive. But then, but then I come to the conclusion: well, Who am I following? Am I following a man? Am I following a church? Am I following a group of people? Or am I following what I believe the Creator Universe, Jesus Christ? So I always, I've been having to come back to that fact for 26 years, man, over and over again. You know, I remember being in the joint, and friends I made in there had were um, on paper; they had paperwork on them. I didn't know they had paperwork on them until I got out. But these guys are like bona fide Christian leaders in there. And I'm like, oh, okay, so now no wonder I'm suspect. Because you got all these other guys that are like, you know, I mean, child molesters. They're like on the, on the, on the, you know, they're mixed in somehow and they got it under the radar. Yeah. You know, but so, so I know, uh, so I, I know why I brought that up. But basically what I'm saying is I know there are people out there, man, who say one thing, but they're like goat sheep, goat sheep and goat wolf clothing. We got them all in all, all in all groups. And, and the thing is, it, it's that's not that's not just when it when it you know it, that's not just religious stuff. You know what I mean? People in general. I think it's in general, bro. Yeah. It just is what it is. People will sometimes have the right reason to do something and and see something else that changes. The, you know what I mean? Like. You know, there's 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 paths all the way, and, and you may feel that you're going on the wrong path, the right path, but then you see something that's beneficial, and whether it's hypocritical or not, if it's beneficial to you, you do it. Yeah. And so then people see the hypocrisy in it, and you know it's sad because I think that if everybody would forget all the bullshit and the drama in 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 religion, they could do so much more. You know what I mean? They do a lot. Don't get me wrong. I know religion does a lot. Churches do a lot. They help, you know. But imagine if they all got together and didn't have all these crazy, stupid differences and, and, and just said, listen, I don't care what you believe. 
you know, I love you as an individual, then let's do this. You know, let's try to do something.